Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. In this one, I'll be showing you how to improve performance on your Django website by optimizing your SQL queries. So what I intend to achieve in this tutorial would be to find a way to reduce the amount of SQL queries you have there and also to reduce the time it takes to load a resource. So here is a sample API I created to demonstrate this, which returns back a list of events and you can see um, the list of events over here. And to achieve this, it's um, executed 16 SQL queries and also the time to load this resource is 616 milliseconds. And by the way, I'm using Django debug toolbar, toolbar to be able to track this. So I'll let me just go to the detail view and show you this too. So it took 233 milliseconds to load this and four SQL queries. So now this is what the resource looks like. So let's go and see what the SQL query looks like. So over here, I'm selecting the event, selecting the user, selecting the category, and selecting the tags. And if you head over to Visual Studio Code, in our models, we can see the creator um, is a foreign key, the category is also a foreign key, and the tags is a many-to-many -many field. So what this query does over here is that it creates four SQL queries, one to get the event, the other one to fetch the um, user um, object, the third one for the category, and the final one for the tags. So the question would be, how can I be able to reduce the amount of SQL queries it takes to get this? And if you come over here to the list view with the one that returns the list of events, if I come over to the SQL queries, if you can notice, you have so many duplicates. So when you see something like this, it calls for optimization. So you can see over here, this to get the category ID of two is duplicated three times. So we have it over here, one, two, and also three, in three places. So to be able to reduce this, and I want us to also track the amount of time it takes to um, achieve this. So let me just quickly open up Notepad and just get this information quickly. I want us to understand what we are doing step by step. So for API slash events time to load it took us 616 milliseconds and the queries were 16 16 queries while for API events um, ID 1 I'll just copy and paste this quickly took us two, two, that's three milliseconds and four SQL queries. So I would call this before optimize. Okay, cool. So we have this data in place. So I'll show you how to improve this. So to show this, to demonstrate this, I will be heading over to the um, Django shell for us to be able to demonstrate what is actually going on. So I would first make use of from django.db. I'm going to be importing two things to be able to for us to be able to see the SQL queries that runs whenever we make um, execute a query. So reset queries. So these are two stops I'll be getting from from Django.db connection request. Okay. I forgot the import statement. Okay, cool. So the next thing we'll also be doing is to import our models. I just want to demonstrate 
what I'm going to do. And the stuff I'm going to be using is select related, select related and prefetch um, related queries. Yeah, am I correct? Yes, I am. So. I would import the events model. Cool. So to give you a view of what is currently going on here, the first thing I'll do would be to just um, create an event. I'll name this event one. So I'll be simply doing this. Let me just get um, event dot object dot get where id is equals to one. So if I now do connection dot queries this is um, imbued by the Django framework so can you see the queries these are the queries it executed to be able to get this particular object so now the next thing to do would be to call the reset queries method so what this simply does is, is to clear this particular list if you can see over here this is a list the connection dot queries returns so I'll head over and click reset queries. Then if I call back connection queries, you can see it's currently empty. So the next thing to do would be to, um, let's head over to the model and check. We can get the category. So let's see what happens when we try to get the category. So if I do E1 dot category, It returns back networking. So let's go check the connection dot queries, and you can see over here. What happens here is for it to be able to get the category object, it runs another SQL query, which is which is in sync with what um, goes on right here. So first of all, it got the event, it executed that query. So now we wanted to get the category, it, it executes another query. So the question is, how can we? Be able to make this not to happen so whenever I just get that event with the idea of one it should get all related fields and this leads us to what we call selected um, select related um, method in the Django query set so I'll quickly show you that so I'm creating another object over here okay I could use the one I created before I'll call it E2. So what this does is I'm gonna use select related. Select related is for foreign keys. So if I do select related and I do creator according to the model and category. So this is E2. E2 is being executed. So if we check, let me just reset the queries and re-execute this. So if I do connection.queries, can you see? So what this does is that it fetches all related um, foreign key fields. So if you can see here, you'll notice some inner joints. So what this does is that it's creating a, a table that is a combination of the event table, the create um, user table which is the creator and also the category table that is why you can see this left outer join and inner join all the stuffs are SQL related stuffs so now if I call reset query over here so now let's just confirm connection with queries it means everything is our queries is currently cleared so if I want to get e2 dot category E2 dot category. You know the previous time when we did E1 dot category, it called upon it's um, executed this SQL query. But now we've made use of the select related method, which is part of the objects um, query set. And I called E2 dot category. Let's check if it created a new query. So connection dot query. Can you see currently it is empty. So what this does is that when we select an event it selects all related fields which we specified here so that is the use of all these inner joins and left outer join statements it brings it one to um up to a, te um, a temporary table if you do if you know your sql you know what i'm talking about so the next thing would be 
what about if you do something like E2 because the model over here has um, tags but tags is a many to many field so for many to many fields we would have to make use of some other one called prefetch related this is just to, for you guys to get the concept of what I'm going to do before I apply it to our API so the next one is prefetch related and what do we want to prefetch? we want to prefetch the tags so cool and if we come to our connection dot queries over here can you see more joins are here can you see this third inner join where it selects the whole event tags and you can see everything over here if you look uh, closely can you see the event tags and everything and the second field in this connection dot queries is the time the time it takes to um, execute this query so the next thing I would want to do would be to also reset our queries then if I want to get all tags so I'll do e3.tags.all and let's see okay it returns the tags and let's check our connection dot queries cool currently it's empty so the advantage of this is that whenever you select a particular event object it's going to select all related fields so whenever you want to select um, that related field it won't hit your database it won't make another SQL query so in turn what this does is that it um, reduces the amount of SQL queries to your server and also reduces the time it takes to load your resources so now that we've gotten this um, the basic idea of select related and preferred related I would want us to apply it to um, our API over here so I head over to Visual Studio Code and you can see over here in the views currently the query set we have is just events.object.all so the first one I'm going to do is select related and what are we selecting? we're selecting the creator and remember the creator is just the name I give it points to the user um, model that is why in the SQL queries you would see user and not creator. So this is just the name I give over here, creator. So back to the views. So we select creator and we also select Katsi Gori. Then the next one is prefetch related. And what do we prefetch? We want to prefetch the tags. So like I said, the prefetch related is for many to many fields. So over here, I'll just um, duplicate this and bring it over here to the details view. So we have the API, event API view and the event detail view. The event API view is for the lists and also for creation of a particular event. While the event detail view is just to retrieve a specific event object. So once we save this, let's check over here if it's reloaded. Cool. So our server is reloaded then first things first let's remember we have 16 sql queries and it took us 616 milliseconds so if i refresh okay cool the time from tweets it's not specific so first of all we have something awesome going on here if you can see the sql queries now it just took two sql queries to get the list of events previously it was 16 queries and it was 616 milliseconds let's see what happens for the detail view let's do a refresh the time flow to it because the server reloads and oh okay cool so let's compare and contrast so it took us two sql queries now so you can see there's some sort of improvement so if i head over to this can you see the two SQL queries? The first SQL query was to select the event and all its foreign keys. So we can see it over here. It selects the user and also the category. While the second SQL um, statement is to select the 
many-to-many -many field because when you use many-to-many -many fields in Django, it creates a, 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 a joint table. It creates a separate table when you use the many-to-many -many field tags. That is why it is doing this separate SQL query and that is how prefetch works. So you can see if we compare this, let's see API slash events. Previously it took us 616 milliseconds. Over here it's taking us 302 milliseconds. And we had 16 SQL queries, but now we have two SQL queries. And one thing to note is because the, the, the Django debug tool bar also um, adds to the time it takes to load this resource. So I could just quickly show you that. So if I remove this SQL query, for instance, and I reload, just watch the time over here. I believe it should it should reduce. Can you see it reduced? It reduces. So the main thing to watch out for is for your SQL queries. And I hope I have successfully um, shown you guys the benefits of select related and prefetch related. So in a small Django app, this might not be so useful, but when you have um, when your application grows in complexity, where you have like a single single page making um, making um, requests to multiple endpoints, it is always good to optimize your SQL query. And I hope I've shown you that in this video. So thank you guys for watching.